chapter 8. And Sergio, you can just put up any, anything up, just good news or something. Uh, Luke chapter 8 and verse... verse 42 so if you have your bibles look chapter 8 and if you do not have a bible uh, there's a bible right in front of you uh, please take it and, and open it that, that is for you look chapter 8 and verse 42 for he had an only daughter about 12 years of age and she was dying but as he went the multitudes pushed him pushed around him now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitudes press you and you say, who's touched me? But Jesus said, somebody touched me for I perceived power going out from me. And when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all people the reason she touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said to her, daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Somebody say praise the Lord. This is a two story in one story. Jesus comes to a city and one father who's daughter 12 years of age any 12 year olds we have in this place you're 12 years of age raise your hand if you're 12 years of age nobody is here is here 12 okay awesome you're 12 years of age come over here bro come here for a second quick 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 run run so th this we don't have a daughter and he doesn't look like a girl but so this man Jarius he had a daughter who was this height most likely this old she was 12 years of age and the bible says you, you can sit down over here in front and the bible says that she was sick and she was about to die and in the same time jesus is walking to heal this little girl who is 12 years of age a woman who suffered for 12 years so this woman suffered as long as this girl was alive this woman had an issue of blood. A blood was flowing out of her. She had this woman cycle that never stopped. And the Bible says that she had this sickness. She suffered for 12 years as long as this girl was alive. But Jesus is not going to this woman's house. He's going to a little girl's house. And this woman is unclean ceremonially. That means that she cannot be in a public place. That means that she cannot go to temple. That means that physically he cannot, she cannot be intimate with her husband. The law said that any place this woman sits on, if she just sits on the carpet, after this the carpet has to be washed. If she sits on the bench, the bench has to be washed. If she takes a cup during lunch, the cup immediately needs to be washed. Everything she touches needs to be washed because she is not clean. So this woman cannot be in a public place. And she ends up in a public place and the Bible says she starts to do something incredible. In the Bible we see when Jesus touches people, great things happen. When Jesus touched a blind man, his eyes were open. When Jesus touched a deaf man, his ears were open. When Jesus touched the lepers, their leprosy disappeared. When Jesus touches people, incredible things happen. He touched the dead and they were raised back to life. When Jesus touches somebody, their lives are not the same. Is there anybody in this place that was touched by Jesus Christ and your life did not remain the same? But what happened when Jesus doesn't touch you? But what happened if Jesus is not going to touch you? But what happened if you're like this woman who needs to be touched but he's not even going in your way? But what happens if you are like this woman who has 12 years of sickness and has spent so much money to be cured and nothing happens and Jesus doesn't even seem like to mind and care about you. He is going in a different direction and he's not even going to touch you. This woman is so inspiring because she teaches us a lesson. When Jesus is not going to touch you, faith reaches out to Jesus and touches him. Faith reaches out to Jesus and touches him when he is going in a complete different direction. And she reached out her faith and she touched Jesus. And something happened. She was immediately healed. 
she was immediately healed. She was not the only person that touched Jesus. There was another woman who was a sinner, who was a prostitute and she came and touched Jesus and she was healed. There was a man whose name is Tom, Thomas who was full of doubt and said I don't believe that Jesus rose from the dead and when he touched Jesus all the doubt was gone and he was a believer. There was other people in the Bible who touched Jesus and their lives were never the same. See sometimes we as Christians want God to touch us but sometimes God wants you to touch him. The Bible says Jesus came to seek and save the lost but the Bible also says that God rewards those that seek him. Jesus Christ wants us as Christians to release our faith when we don't feel like God is touching us to release our faith and to touch him with our faith. And maybe you don't have faith today to touch his hand. She did not have faith to touch his hand or to touch his face or to touch his feet. She only had enough faith to touch the border of his garment. Maybe you don't have enough faith to touch his hands. But you do have enough faith to touch the border. Not of his face, of his garment. You know how she got healed? By touching the end of his robe. Can you imagine how powerful Jesus is? Even the end of his robe that's full of dust can get you healed. Can you imagine how amazing Jesus is? That she did not touch his face, she did not touch his hands, she did not touch his feet or his toes. She just touched the end of his robe that most likely collected dust and mud and she touched that and the Bible says immediately 12 year old problems stopped. If you don't have enough faith to touch Jesus' hand, have enough faith to touch the end of his robe. And let me tell you something, the same power that is in Jesus is the same power that is at the end of his robe. Come on somebody. You can touch the end of his robe. Some people feel unworthy to touch the face of Jesus. They feel unworthy to touch the hand of Jesus. They say, you don't know Jesus where my hands have been. If you feel unworthy to touch Jesus, at least touch the hem of his garment. If you are stained by sin and full of guilt and full of unworthiness this morning, I want to challenge you, do not cross off your faith and do not put your faith on the back seat. Still reach out with your faith and touch the hem of his garment. Touch the border of his garment and you can be cured. You will be changed by the glory of God. Don't discredit your faith and don't put your faith aside just because you're not worthy and just because the whole society said you're not clean. Because the religious society said that you don't belong here, that does not mean that you do not have the permission to touch the hem of his garment, to touch the border of his garment. You can touch the border of his garment, somebody say amen. And this woman had enough faith to just touch the border of his garment and she touched it and the Bible says that she was healed. And the Bible says that she was, that she was healed. What's interesting in this scripture is that she got healed without permission. She did not ask Jesus for permission to be healed. She did not ask Jesus even if it's his will to heal her. She just went and took her healing without permission. It seems like a kind of wrong thing to do. When I moved into my apartments, uh, I didn't have internet and still I don't have internet and but I wanted internet I needed to I don't know what I needed to do but I needed internet in my house I live in 21st century and I'm 24 years of age and without internet I can't function I need internet and so I needed internet and so I knew some people who were very smart and who were able to hack in into neighbor's internet and this is very sinful I'm about to share you one of my sins and uh, this is your youth pastor yes and so I invited this man and I just said for one night I needed to use the internet just in case. I don't spend a lot of time at home anyway so I have internet on my phone and, but I just need it just in case. And so and this young man without mentioning his name uh, said yeah I, I can get it done for you. So he comes and was trying to get into the neighbor's internet and it didn't work because right now you can't get into somebody's internet if it's protected by password. And uh, after that we're like you know what this is just kind of wrong to do anyway and um, let's just do the right thing. We went to the neighbor and said hey listen um, we just need the internet. Is it okay if we can use your internet? And the neighbor says yeah no problem. So he went for like 10 minutes disappeared and then I looked to him and I'm like okay this is not good. <laughs> this is not good. The lady left for 10 minutes. It's over. I mean we should run from here. And she came back gave us the password, the username and everything. She says anytime. God bless you guys. Just, just all, all the good stuff. 
and even when I shared about the internet some of you kind of felt a bit you tried to hack in somebody's internet don't pretend to be righteous some of you did that all the time too but what I love about Jesus is Jesus's power is not protected by password it's interesting that when you use somebody's internet and some of you here and you're using church's internet and what happens is that when you're using somebody's internet you're getting the benefit that they paid for except you're not paying for it and most of the internet right now if you're trying to get other people's internet they are protected by a password why because they don't want you to use something they're paying for what i love jesus is jesus's power is not protected by a password woman comes touches gets her healing and she was about to go home completely healed and jesus did not even give her a password jesus didn't even pray for her he didn't say it's okay to be healed she just takes her healing and leaves what would happen if as a church we will have this faith of this woman who will not doubt say is this the will of God for me to be healed is this the will of God for me to have a breakthrough and we come to Jesus and say God is it okay can you give me the password can you give me the permission no she comes she takes her healing without permission and leaves she takes it and leaves can you be that person today you know what faith is faith doesn't ask questions faith doesn't have doubt faith is not perfect Faith is not being holy moly. Faith is not being without flaws. Faith is just having a confidence. I can take it. I can receive it. And this morning I want to encourage you that when Jesus looked at this woman, he didn't call her a hacker. He says, why did you hack into my power? Jesus did not look at this woman and say, what the heck are you doing? What, you just you just got power out of me because Jesus' power went out of you just hacked into my power you got what you wanted and you're about to leave what do you think you're doing do you, do you, do you know that you can get judged for that you just hacked into my power and you this, you got something for free 12 years woman this is not wrong no Jesus called her a woman of faith see in the kingdom of God you're not a hacker when you tap into God's power and get what you need you are a person of faith in this world you are a hacker and there is a sin it's wrong to hack into somebody's internet but in God's world actually it's faith when you tap into God's power and say God I am sick but there's healing in your power and you don't come and ask for permission no Jesus already said if you want to be healed that I died for you to be healed do you don't ask for permission is this God's will for me to be saved no it is God's will for you to be saved tap in to his power and be saved for the glory of God come on somebody You know a woman who came to Jesus and started to touch his feet when he was eating that was completely wrong Jesus is eating don't touch my feet when I'm eating and plus the woman was a prostitute Jesus never called her a hooker he called her a daughter he called her a woman of faith why because anytime you tap in to the sources of God by your faith Jesus doesn't call you a hacker he calls you a faith a man and a woman of faith you are a woman and a man. You know that actually in this scripture Jesus didn't call her a woman. He called her daughter. There was this only one few times that Jesus called somebody a daughter. When you walk to God and you don't just pray to God but you say God I'm going to touch you and I'm going to receive your strength. Like we were praying for Salvador and their family. I'm going to receive your comfort. God I'm going to receive your blessing. And you don't come mm, I'm not sure this is the will of God. Mm, uh, no, no, that's not faith. Faith says, I know this is the will of God. Faith says, I know it's the will. This woman did not doubt. If she would doubt, she would never get there. But because she did not doubt, had this unwavering faith, she just comes to Jesus and taps into his power and gets what she wants. And literally, nobody noticed it. Nobody saw it. If Jesus would not make it public, nobody even would know that this woman got free blessing. She got free healing for free by tapping into his power. This is a good God we serve. This is a mighty God we serve. But you know what's interesting? Many people surrounded Jesus. Many people were around Jesus but only one tapped into his power. Jesus looked to the people, he says, who touched me? And you know what the scripture says? They all denied. What does that mean? They were comfortable with being around him but not touching him. They were pushing him because there was not enough space but none of them touched him. We do not want to be a church in this place where we are around Jesus during worship. We are around Jesus during the word and we are very close to him and we are comfortable with it. But at the same time we have issues, bleeding problems. But no, 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 we dare, we dare not to touch him for our breakthrough. Why? Maybe it's not the will of God for me to prosper. Maybe it's not the will of God for me to be healed. So we just are comfortable being around Jesus. But this woman says, I'm not comfortable being around him. I want to touch him. 
don't be the person that Jesus looks around and says who touched me you says no no I did not touch you no no be the person Jesus I touched you we touched you we touched you why because we didn't just come to be around Jesus we came to touch him and him to touch us because our destiny is in need of the touch of God they all denied they all denied and then Peter starts to justify and says Jesus please understand he's just trying to justify we didn't touch you when I read the scripture I feel sadness I said Peter why not didn't you touch him why not other men didn't touch Jesus but one woman did I believe that in this church it's going to be more than one person who's going to touch Jesus I believe it's going to be more than one person when we pray for something and when we minister and when we declare it's going to be more than one person who's going to reach out and says God I truly believe I know some people look at me and say oh, you're fanatic you're praying for all this stuff with these guys it's just weird and, and, and this and that and also but God I'm going to touch you Jesus I'm going to release my faith and I will believe for my family I will release my faith God during this worship and I will believe greater things are yet to come for me I've been looking for a job for three four five years but God greater I release my faith greater things are still yet come to me don't just be around Jesus real faith is not comfortable with just being around Jesus when you have an issue real faith reaches out and touches Jesus for his breakthrough for her breakthrough that's the real faith release your faith today and God's gonna touch you this woman had an issue this woman had an issue her issue was with blood your issue probably with something else some people's issues today are with cancer other people's issues are with fear and we had an opportunity to pray for somebody yesterday who had uh, torments at night and this person takes this morning said I don't have those no more maybe your issues are with oppression maybe your issues are with depression maybe your issue is with the family her issue was with the issue of blood. Every woman knows that every girl has this thing called period. It's a woman's excuse to be moody and have a reason to, uh, for you not to blame her. This is just my frustration sometimes with that. And so every woman, uh, every young lady, she has this thing called uh, period and I won't go in, into it at all. But it's just a monthly cycle where a woman is bleeding. And it's okay to have that cycle. What it's not okay is when you don't stop bleeding. Why it was an issue wasn't because every month she was bleeding. It's that she didn't stop bleeding for 12 months. That's when it becomes an issue. It's okay to feel sad one day. It's not okay when that sadness doesn't stop. It's okay to maybe one month go under and not have enough money but listen it's not okay when it starts going every single month and it's been going like this for the last 12 years. It's okay to feel once in a while feel down but it's not okay to be down for the rest of your life. It's okay if once you have a cough or something but when that thing doesn't stop listen and the bleeding continues my friend it's no longer a cycle it's an issue. It's okay to have a cycle it's not okay to have an issue. And this woman realized it's not just a normal cycle because some people say I am bleeding but it doesn't stop and it's been years, it's been months, I am discouraged, I am down, I am sick, I am poor and it's just like everybody else is doing like that too and so they say it, it's a cycle. My friend if it did not stop bleeding it's not a cycle, it's an issue and Jesus Christ is the fundamental answer for all issues of life. And Jesus Christ can take care of that issue. What is your issue today? Issue is something that's supposed to be a cycle but it doesn't stop at a cycle, it continues. That issue Jesus Christ can take care of today. That issue can stop today. Jesus Christ can stop the bleeding. Jesus Christ can stop the pain. Jesus Christ can stop the poverty. Jesus Christ can stop the oppression at night. Jesus Christ can stop it if you can reach out your faith. Maybe you don't, you don't experience greatest touch of God but you can touch him greatly today by your faith. And that issue, this woman didn't just have an issue with blood, she also had an issue with finances because the Bible says she spent all her livelihood on the doctors. Maybe your issue is with finances today as well. Jesus Christ can touch you and if he doesn't touch you, you can touch him and that bleeding can stop. Jesus doesn't reward pain, he rewards faith. Jesus did not heal her 
because she suffered for 10 years. Jesus is full of compassion. He healed her because she had faith. He didn't say, woman, I am moved by your pain and the fact that you've lost so much money. And God is moved, but something he is moved more by pain than pain and poverty and sickness as he's moved by a childlike faith that says to Jesus, I know my Redeemer lives. I know you will never leave me. I know that you will be with me and that's why I will fear no evil. If you reach out to Jesus, your bleeding can stop.